All right, man, peace. So, brothers, this is going to be volume three in the Operation Save LeBron's Legacy series. And I'm sure that there are going to be a few more entries after this as the Lakers acquire more pieces to assist LeBron James in hopefully making one last finals push in an attempt to win a championship so that they can craft the narrative that LeBron James is truly the greatest player of all time because he was the first player to be able to win a championship on three separate teams. Because that's what they do in this modern day time period. They create all of these silly metrics to try to make a player out to be greater than he is as opposed to just understanding how dominant was he during his tenure, during his time period. And that's really all that you have to do. LeBron James, in my view, is one of the top 10 greatest players of all time. Do I believe that if he wins another championship with the Lakers, that that will improve his stock? To a degree. That would probably vault him over Larry Bird, in my view, as the greatest small forward of all time. As of right now, I still have Bird above LeBron. Why is that? Because he basically accomplished the same things that LeBron James has accomplished in half the time. Larry Bird's prime was from 1979 to 1988. In that time period, he won three championships in a league and in an era where you had other great teams like the Lakers, the 76ers, etc. And he was also able to win three MVPs, which is one less than LeBron's, but he did it in three consecutive years. So as of right now, they're pretty much neck and neck when it comes to evaluating his overall legacy because of his performance in the 2018 NBA Finals, as well as how his team flamed out last season with the Lakers due to the toxicity that he himself introduced. But as I've told you brothers throughout this series, the NBA is an entertainment league as many of you cats out there understand very well. Not only is it meant to try to promote a strong sense of competition, but they also have to develop narratives so that people, you know, they can stay entranced and stay interested in what's going on across the league over the course of an 82 game schedule. That means that LeBron James, one of their legends, has to be able to bow out gracefully. Adam Silver, he's much more compassionate than David Stern was. David Stern didn't give a shit. David Stern was one of the first commissioners of any major sports league in America to understand the importance of narratives and storylines. But his attitude was, once your storyline was over, get the hell out. Adam Silver's mentality is, we're going to try to assist our great players on their way out. So that maybe they'll be more willing to assist us in promoting many of the Luciferian agendas and ideologies that have become so important and so and so much a part of what the NBA is. And that's why I believe Adam Silver, one of many reasons why Adam Silver made sure that David Griffin became the, the acting president of the New Orleans Pelicans. Not only do you have an asset in Anthony Davis, who is extremely highly skilled and you don't want to waste him, but he's not a leader. So what you want to do is you want to move him to a team with an established alpha that would be more high profile, maybe promote Anthony Davis more. And in addition to that, that would put LeBron James in the position where he owes Adam Silver. So how does LeBron James pay back Adam Silver? By making sure that in his new film, Space Jam 2, he puts some WNBA players in there. Hopefully help promote the WNBA, which is a dying league, a league that should have been killed off a long time ago. But the main reason why it still exists is to promote toxic femininity. So anyway, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. Deal. The Lakers reached an agreement to acquire Anthony Davis from the New Orleans Pelicans for three players and three future first-round draft picks, including this year's number four overall pick. Sources told ESPN the Lakers are setting Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, and the picks to the Pelicans. And let me say this. This is the greatest thing that will ever happen for Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram. To be sent over to a team like the New Orleans Pelicans where there's going to be a lot less pressure and the team is going to be built around youth as opposed to acting as some type of supplement for LeBron James and his circus act. It's the best thing to happen to Lonzo Ball. Now, according to Caesars, the Lakers are the favorites to win next year's NBA crown with 7-2 to two odds. The Bucks and Clippers are right behind the purple and gold. As of right now, do I believe that the Lakers are going to win the championship next season? No, I do not. But if they're able to acquire a Jimmy Butler or Kyrie Irving, then yes, I would say that they should be the odds-on favorite to win the championship next year if they're able to get one of those two players. Max Kellerman. Yes. Should your Lakers mm -hmm. be the favorites next season? No, not next season. Lakers will win a championship in the next couple seasons, but next season they you know, should be the and Claire. No. I've always stated that the goal for the LeBron James experiment, for the LeBron James experience with the LA Lakers, was just to get one. He just wants to get one because he knows if he can get one, 
then he can go up on the mountaintop with the rest of the Laker legends. If he doesn't get one, then he goes down with, with Elgin Baylor as the only great player in the history of the Lakers to never win at least one championship. So LeBron James and the NBA, they need this to work. And they're going to go out of their way to make sure that LeBron James has the best chance possible to win at least one championship with the Lakers. Because, absolutely, but they just had to tear it all down, which was the right thing to do. History of the NBA is a team that gets the best player, and AD is the best player by far. No matter what Lonzo or Ingram become, AD is the best player by far in the deal. He's one of the greatest players who ever lived. Um, Stat-wise, yes. Impact-wise, no. And he's in his prime. It's amazing. But now that's going to take him about a year to flesh out the roster. Not, it's not just about playing together. It's about accumulating the pieces around LeBron and AD in order to win a championship. That'll happen not this year. Stephen A., if Kawhi stays in Toronto, the Raptors will repeat. If, on the other hand, he goes to the only other place that he's, that he's seriously reported to be considering, which is the L.A. Clippers, then I am telling you right now, the Clippers will surely win the NBA title next year. If Kawhi Leonard were to leave the Toronto Raptors to sign with the L.A. Clippers, they would have a chance to win a title. If Kawhi Leonard were to sign with the L.A. Clippers and the Clippers also sign another player like a Kyrie Irving or Jimmy Butler, then yes, they would become the odds-on favorite to win a championship next season. Let's not forget, this Clippers team is presently constructed and they have room for two max players in addition to what they got. This Clippers team, as presently constructed, just took the Warriors with KD, a fully loaded Warriors team, six games. Now you're going to add the best player on earth, Kawhi Leonard, the reigning and defending finals MVP. You're just going to drop him in on that team just as you did to Toronto the previous season. Toronto didn't give, by the way, the Cavs nearly the series the previous season that the Clippers just gave the Warriors. And now you're saying... Right, but did the Clippers really give the Warriors a great series or did the Warriors sleepwalk through that series? I mean, I mean, the Clippers won two games, both of them in Golden State. One of them, they came back from down 35 points in, in, in a quarter. I mean, give me a break. We pretty much know what that was. The Warriors, they were play fighting with the Clippers. They let things go a little bit too far. No KD and no Clay and LeBron and AD and Kuzma need to stack that roster, stock the roster over the next couple of years. Well, the Lakers, they need some 3 and D guys. They need some shooting. And they need one more star. That's really what they need. Clippers, by the way, the Clippers would still have room for another max deal or more free agents. Danny Green, whoever would come with Kawhi. I'm telling you right now. Ka so Danny Green and Kawhi have become like a package deal like Batman and Robin? Like, like, what's really going on with that? Leonard's the balance of power in the NBA this upcoming season. The Lakers are a powerhouse now. They're winning chip. But next year... The Kawhi Leonard team will surely win the title, either in Toronto or in L.A. If Kawhi stays in Toronto, especially with Anunoby coming back, they definitely should be the favorite to win the chip next year. I mean, unless the Lakers are able to acquire Kyrie. If the Lakers acquire Kyrie, that would be a hell of a finals, the Toronto Raptors against the L.A. Lakers. That would pretty much be everything that the NBA could dream of. Okay, as long as you do me a favor and stick to one point, I don't want to hear about max player or max room for two, you know, two max players. You said on the record last week that if Dwight Leonard goes to the Clippers by himself, yes, they would win the title. I'm saying, oh. don't bring. Don't, I'm just saying, stick to that. Don't give no, me no, a no, second no. play. That's no, what no, you no, said. Say, no, no, no. What I'm saying, Stephen A, is just Kawhi will do it, but it's not going no, to no, be just no, no, Kawhi. No, 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 no. no, no. I'm saying we don't know that. We don't know that. But what I'm saying is, I want to make sure that I'm reminding you that you're on the record. If Kawhi Leonard goes to the Clippers by himself without another marquee with him, correct, they would win the title. That's what you said for sure. They that's all I'm sure. that's, all, that, yep. that's all I need to know. That's all I need yep. to know. Their I disagree. Could be Denver. That's fine. I'm not quite sure if the Clippers supporting cast would be as good as the Toronto Raptors supporting cast. When you have players, especially of the ilk, defensively of a Marcus Gasol, of a Serge Ibaka, of a Pascal Siakam, that cannot be overlooked. The Clippers, they have a nice young team, but I'm not quite sure if they will be as competitive on the defensive end as the Toronto Raptors were. I disagree. Denver's a obviously very formidable, and I'm not going to sleep on Denver like... 
Denver's a nice young team. Last year, no question about it. Denver is no joke. But I will tell you that I think that it's valid that the Lakers are favorites to win the title to, to win the title next year because I think the supper. The only reason why you're saying that is because you're a fanboy of the city of L.A. You want to be out there in the quote unquote city of angels all throughout the whole throughout the spring next year. Stephen A. Smith is like a chick. Everything that he says, the vast majority of his evaluations are based on his feelings, not facts. That's why he's that's why he's wrong so often. Three parts that they need are going to be easier to acquire than it would have been to acquire a superstar, whether it be in free agency or obviously via the trade for Anthony Davis, which which clearly Rich Paul pulled off. Here's the reality of the situation. In Anthony Davis, we have one of the top five players on the planet. We have a guy. Well, I would say that he's a bubble top five player. I believe that there are players that are competing for that number five spot. I would say that he's one of them, along with James Harden and a few other players, Joel Embiid, so on and so forth, Giannis Antetokounmpo. I can't really put AD above Giannis. Giannis has an MVP. AD does not have that. Giannis has gone to the conference finals. AD has not done that. So I know that sometimes we can be bedazzled by his offensive skill set and all things that he can do out there on the floor. But thus far, all he's shown himself to be is a stat stuffer. Who averages more points than LeBron James, averaged more rebounds, than, not this past year, because obviously Anthony Davis in the season that they had with him, you know, get pulled in the fourth quarter. And they didn't want to play in minutes and all of this other nonsense because he had made it clear he wanted out. No, he made it clear that he was a quitter. He made it clear that he quit on his team. That's what he did. Davis, the previous two years, had averaged 28 and 11, averaged more points, averaged more rebounds, averaged more block shots than somebody like LeBron James. He could defend four different. So in other words, Stephen A. Smith, are you trying to make the case that Anthony Davis is a better player than LeBron James? Because if you're not, don't compare them stat-wise. That's another example of how people use stats to try to promote their own nonsense, their own false narrative. Once again, the, the verdict to me is still out on Anthony Davis. We know that he can stuff the stat sheet. We also know that he's not a leader. We know that he'll quit. We know that he's easily influenced. Those are the things that we know thus far. But to try to say that he's the fifth best player in the NBA, he's not proved that. He's, he's come nowhere near proving that. I would take James Harden over Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is a better overall player. But James Harden shows that what he does can result in wins. Even before Mike D'Antoni got there, James Harden was leading the Houston Rockets to the Western Conference Finals. These are just facts. So when Anthony Davis shows that he can lead a team anywhere, then I'll start to give him more credit than his stats might seem to elude that he should be given credit for. But I, I, I can't give him all that credit right now. He has a long way to go. He can defend any front line position. He can play face to the basket. He can play with his back to the basket. He can hit a mid-range J. He can hit a three-point J. He can hit free throws. He can post up. He can do all that shit, but he can't lead a team. This dude is all world. And when you have that kind of a player with somebody the magnitude of LeBron James, the physical presence that the two of them have, combined with the cachet that LeBron James has, considering playoff action and how officiating plays a role, calls and things of that nature. LeBron James' ability to dictate pace, to create mismatches because he's running the show as essentially your point forward. I think all of those things bode very, very well for the Los Angeles Lakers. They'll go into free agency, whether it's trying to acquire somebody like a Seth Curry, whether it's acquiring somebody like a Terry Rozier, that would be a great pickup for the Lakers if they can get Seth Curry. That would be a great pickup. As a matter of fact, if I'm Seth Curry's agent, I'm asking him what the hell's taking him so long to sign with the Lakers. Because that would be his chance to get a championship. Whatever the case may be, that's an option. Kyrie Irving, if you could get him to do a 2 plus 1, sign for 2 years, opt out for the 3rd, have 10 years in the league, and get max dollars then, as opposed to right now. We don't know what kind of discussion is going on there. So I look at it from the standpoint that somehow, some way, now that you have the combination of a LeBron James with a Anthony Davis, it will be easier to lure those other pieces that you need. And they're only marginal pieces that you need to surround them with, where everybody knows what their job description is and focuses on... Well, is everybody really going to know what their job description is? I think that Anthony Davis fits in very well with LeBron James because Anthony Davis is not, he's not an alpha at all. So he'll have no problem doing what LeBron tells him to do. We also know that Anthony Davis is a hard worker. But I think that, that there's precedent for us to understand that in order for players to be able to win with LeBron, it's going to take a period of at least a year and a half. 
and LeBron does not have a year and a half. So it would behoove the Lakers to try to acquire players who have played with him before and know where to be, where LeBron wants them out there on the floor. That's why there's currently news or rumblings that the Lakers are considering signing Mr. White Guilt himself, Kyle Korver, as well as JR, a.k.a. Just Retarded Smith, who we know they both played with LeBron with the Cleveland Cavaliers. There are also, of course, rumblings that Kyrie Irving may be considering signing with the Lakers. We've heard things like he has no intention of signing with them. We've also heard that he will consider going back and playing with LeBron. So we'll find out what's true come July 1st or July 2nd, whenever free agency starts. Doing their job. Obviously, one of those pieces needs to be a perimeter shooter. But again, they were able to hold on to Kyle Kuzma. And I think that's a big, big deal here. When you talk about the Lakers and what they surrendered, how about not only getting it? Well, the big deal about the Lakers being able to retain Kyle Kuzma is why the hell were they able to do so, Stephen A. Smith? That's the question that you should be asking. <laughs> why the hell were the Lakers able to retain their third best player in a deal in which they acquired Anthony Davis? Very strange. Maybe Kyle Kuzma, um, he knows the right people. Davis, but being able to hold on to Kyle Kuzma, I think the fact that those two things transpired firmly positions the Lakers as one of the final four teams in the entire NBA. Well, I would agree with that. The acquisition of AD would definitely put them in the final four teams, at least in the, in the prognostications for the upcoming season. No doubt about that. Now you're telling me LeBron James, Anthony Davis, they can't win a series beyond that? You're damn right they could. I think it's more than fair to look at the Western Conference because I'm assuming Kawhi Leonard, and I shouldn't assume it, but I'm going to anyway, I'm assuming he may leave Toronto. And, I, and with that in mind, I look at the Western Conference, and I believe that the Los Angeles Lakers can come out of the West. Look at how deep the Clippers are right now. Now you're going to add a finals MVP. I agree with your assessment of the Lakers, by the way. I don't think they need to, first of all. Well, the Clippers are deep as long as they can retain some of their players. They themselves also have players that are free agents, i.e. Patrick Beverly. And if Kawhi Leonard is going to go sign with the Clippers, one would think that they would make Patrick Beverly a priority because they're going to need Patrick Beverly. Palenka messed up the deal in terms of the salary cap management. Now, if that was the only way to get it done, absolutely do it. However, if the Lakers have 23 million left to spend and not 30, um, you ain't going to get a max player anyway. You're not going to get a superstar player. But I'll say this, Stephen. Yeah, what? Okay. The only thing I would say to you is that is that David Griffin already uh, 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 gave up acquiring Kyle Kuzma, right? So why am I going to help the Lakers? I'll tell you why. Knowing that, no, no, no. I'm saying David Griffin's mentality yeah. is this. I'm going to help them position themselves that when all I got to do is insist that the deal happens 24 days earlier. Teams, teams, I, 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 teams I, I, just I don't know what they're... Well, first off, Stephen A. Smith, David Griffin was placed in the New Orleans Pelicans organization to assist the Lakers. So why would he hesitate to assist them further? ...that are bad at this sort of thing, the Knicks, for example. When a player like Carmelo Anthony makes it very clear, I'm only going to re-sign with the Knicks then, hey, Jim Dolan, don't cut Donnie Walsh's legs out and give up the farm for Carmelo. You don't have to. You have him over a barrel. It was made pretty... Well, there was also an issue during that time period, and Max Kellerman is referring to, I believe it was 2010 or 2011, whatever season it was that Carmelo was traded to the Knicks. It was assumed that Carmelo wanted to be a New York Knick, but what happened was the, the Brooklyn Nets also became a possible factor. And that made the Knicks panic. Now, whether they were actually a, going to be a factor in possibly acquiring Carmelo, who knows? But there were rumblings that the Brooklyn Nets themselves were, were trying to hone in on Carmelo. Of course, we know they're also located in New York City. But at the end of the day, the main reason why Carmelo wanted to play on the Knicks in the first place was so that he could be at a media hub to help his D-level actress wife get some type of stardom for herself. That was the main reason why Carmelo made a lot of the bad business decisions that he made. Because if it wasn't for his wife, I do believe that he would have taken LeBron and D-Wade up on their all and joined them as a big three in Miami in 2010, as opposed to the Chris Bosh, D-Wade, LeBron triumvirate. Clear that AD was only going to re-sign with the Lakers. That was a, the worst kept secret in basketball. When okay. that's the case, and you know you're not going to get Jason Tatum from the Celtics, and the Celtics shouldn't include him in a deal anyway for a one-year rental, then, he, then the Lakers have them over a barrel. You, you can get a better deal than what they did, I believe. However... 
Well, that's when Rich Paul came into the equation because Rich Paul basically let every team know that the only team that he was going to resign with, he being Anthony Davis, was the Lakers. So they crafted this. They crafted this uh, this transaction from the very beginning. The matter is, the 23 million they have left to spend, if that's the number, Stephen A, is better spent, as you said, on complementary pieces. And by the way, you could even go big. Mark, Mark Gasol might be available. Uh, 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 Brooke Lopez might be available. Miritich may, may be available, and they may be available on deals where you have size, shooting, defense, everything. But then you ain't gonna have a bench. Like it's good. That's why it would be better for them if they just re-signed JaVale McGee. JaVale McGee was an impact player for them last season. And to be quite frank with you, the lack of JaVale McGee really impacted the Golden State Warriors this season. Had they had JaVale McGee, they would have had a rim protector. Take more than just this season for the Lakers to get all the way there. The Clippers are ready now if you add Kawhi. Well, you can look at it, and some people use Miami as the... I don't want to say the litmus test, but, it, 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 you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the comparable item there. Keep in mind, the Miami Heat had the same challenge, but the Miami Heat lost in the finals. Mm-hmm. It's not like they lost before then. They got to the finals because at the end of the day, when you have D-Wade, LeBron, and Chris Bosh on the same squad, it's rough. excuse uh-huh. me, that's talent to overcome. And I'm thinking along the lines of if you are the Los Angeles Lakers, if you're an opponent of the Los Angeles Lakers, you have LeBron and AD, and to a lesser degree, Kuzma, because let's elevate Kuzma's value in this respect. He is now a third option. And as a third option, that makes him far more formidable than he was as a secondary option. Absolutely, I agree with that. But the real question is, Stephen A. Smith, will Kyle Kuzma actually be the third option? That's the real question. Because in the history of the LeBron James system, players of the type of Anthony Davis normally get subjugated to the third option no matter how talented they are. That's normally how that goes. Because even heading into becoming a Cleveland Cavalier, Kevin Love always put up bigger and better stats than Kyrie Irving, but he naturally was forced to become the third option because Kyrie was the ball handler. In Miami, I won't say that Chris Bosh was better than D. Wade. Of course, we know that that's not the case, but Chris Bosh was relegated to the third option. So that's why I call Anthony Davis Chris Bosh 2.0. I don't think that he's going to be able to put up those huge numbers with the Lakers that certain people might believe. Just for the simple fact that playing in the LeBron James system, normally relegates players of his type to a third option and someone who has to stand on the three-point line in the corner. We'll see if they run some real plays for him and if LeBron James is more amenable to that, especially since he's getting older. And so when you look at it from that perspective, excuse me, that's a lot to overcome. And again, you could end up losing, but it could mm-hmm. be in the finals. I think that they, I think they could pull it off. All right, all right, we are out of time. It is a good day to be a Laker fan. Kawhi Leonard, it's your move. usually is. You're so annoying. Yeah, you should talk. <laughs> That's the pot calling the kettle black. Molly Karam calls somebody annoying. She's going to get her recompense one day, though. We'll see. And I do not believe, not to digress, I don't believe that her quote-unquote union with Jalen Rose is going to last very long. Eventually, Jalen Rose is going to be put in a position where he's going to be forced to either reclaim his manhood or get publicly embarrassed. Because this situation between Molly Karam and LeVar Ball has also reflected on Jalen Rose as well. Always remember something. When you try to force a union with someone who is toxically feminine, toxicity never, it is never, it is never contained to just that person. It also infects everyone that associates with that person. But anyway, we'll see what happens with the Lakers next year with Anthony Davis and LeBron James. So peace.